Hello everyone, this is Impulse, and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 5. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> I've done derped up a bit, guys. I've done derped up. I apparently don't understand uh, village mechanics very well, because I thought if we just covered the doors with those blocks, it would, uh, it would stop it from being a registered village. But apparently once they're registered, removing the, uh, or covering the blocks, or the doors with blocks, and removing daylight doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference, as you can see. These guys still have hearts, and I am not in my AFK spot. So we're going to change that up a little bit today. But first, I want to show you this, something I've been working on. Uh, I decided once I got to this point that uh, I'm actually going to start getting pretty picky about the villagers that I put in here. So uh, we're going to do that today. We're going to start to do some courting of our villagers. So, And also, I want to start putting up the signs for the patrons. So we're going to add about, I don't know, about five or so signs. We'll maybe do five in episode until we get caught up uh, with all the rewards there. But uh, yeah, we'll do that a little bit later, of course. And here, I want to show you this. So I've added these pistons in. I showed this last episode to kind of push them into the corner. And then I decided it would be smart if I actually wired up a dispenser with some minecarts in it to the button here. So that's what's happening. They get pushed over into this corner very tight. Uh, this shoots out at a minecart. And that should pick up a villager. And it will send them over here. And I put this block here because what I was finding is these villagers, once they're in the minecarts, they can kind of control the minecarts. So we need to actually stop them from going anywhere. So I have this block here. There is a sticky piston underneath. And then I had to wire up a little circuit underneath this guy to, uh, to basically pull this block down, push this rail over, and, and that would send them off. And so that would be, you know, after we've decided we actually want to keep them. And then... It would pull the rail back and then bring the block up, otherwise known as an ABBA circuit. So underneath here, I basically have that going on. Uh, it's fairly simple. I can show you here. Uh, we hit the button. It goes into this repeater here, which is going to actually power uh, this piston right after, what do we have it on? Uh, three ticks. So we got a three tick delay there. But at the same time, let's see if I don't I do this without breaking the redstone. <laughs> at the same time, when you hit this button, uh, we are going to get a one tick delay. There's a torch on the other side of this guy, which is actually powering that piston here, this one that's under here, uh, which you can't really see, but uh, actually maybe we can. Uh, there. <laughs> right there, redstone torch. Um, so right away in one tick, it's going to power that uh, or depower that torch, and that's going to pull down first, of course. Two ticks later, this piston's going to extend. So that's good. That's your A and your B. And then what's going to happen is uh, th once this repeater stops being powered, you know, when this button deactivates, uh, it's going to go ahead and pull this back. But we've added some kind of delay here, you can see with these repeaters, uh, that are going to keep this torch off just a little bit longer so that it won't re-extend uh, before this actually gets pulled back so we don't break the rails. So to see that all in action, there you go. <laughs> and you can see what's kind of cool about it is the track gets powered as well. So uh, this track that's right now not powered, it gets extended and it's going to get powered and that's going to send these guys off. So it works pretty good, pretty good. So let me cover that back up now that I've shown you the redstone magic back there. Uh, kind of a mess over here. I'm just kind of covering it up. Doesn't really look that great. We'll have to figure out what to do with that. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and test this out. So we got a button to eject a guy. Hopefully we got some mine carts in here. I got to fill this thing up. And uh, yeah, so we got a cleric and we probably don't really want this guy. So I've been doing this. And I know a lot of people are going to freak out, like, oh, you shouldn't kill villagers, and it's going to stop the breeding, and blah, blah, blah. You know what's weird? Um, again, I'm kind of a noob when it comes to village mechanics. I've been killing these guys, and these guys are still breeding. So that whole thing about, like, killing villagers and it making breeding stop happening doesn't seem to be working or something. <laughs> because, uh, and hopefully these guys will demonstrate here. Uh, you saw me just kill somebody. I, I thought it was like a five-minute penalty or something like that before they would be able to breed again, but I, I've noticed that that doesn't seem to stop them. So anyway, we will start going through these guys. There we got another one. It's another cleric. We don't want him. And so they're basically just going through here until we actually get librarians, and hopefully we will get one soon. Uh, I probably won't be keeping toolsmiths because i got a ton of them in here. So we'll go ahead and really just focusing on librarians at this point. So yeah, definitely should bring in some more minecarts. 
Um, there we go. Oh, yeah, definitely don't want this guy. So, yeah, I'm going to continue going through here until we start to get some decent librarians. And uh, today we're going to try to unlock some of them and uh, maybe do a few other things, of course. So, all right, let me, uh, let me get, oh, there you go. They're breeding whilst in there. Um, so there, there you go. We got like a triple villager breeder going on, apparently. <laughs> cool. Anyway, guys, I will uh, continue sorting the villagers. And once I have a few good ones, we'll, uh, we'll start unlocking these and see what we get. All right, so I just got excited. I finally got a white coat villager out of here. And I think he's the only one that was in there. I really don't see any other white coats. How about this little baby down there? Nope, he's going to be a cleric. Uh, what are you doing up there, buddy? <laughs> He'll grow up. That water will push him over. By the way, this is how I fix that guardian spawning thing. I haven't had any guardians spawn in here since. Uh, basically, just split up the water so there's never any case where there's two high sources of water. Um, even back there, it's just one high. There's one source in the corner, one in the corner, and they kind of flow down. So, uh, anyway, let's check this guy out. Oh, come on. Oh, man. I was really hoping you'd be a librarian. Uh, well... Hey, to say it, buddy. You didn't make the cut. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, hey, we got some other villagers in here that I haven't really unlocked. So let's go take a look at them. Uh, let's see what we're going to need to trade with these guys. We're going to need some paper. Uh, so this may lead to us wanting to do a little sugarcane farm. And I'm kind of thinking that's what we do. I'm thinking we're going to need... Uh, sugar cane for the paper and then probably uh, also some leather and stuff for books because I think I want to do the whole uh, paper book written book trade thing uh, it seems to be fairly cheap fast way to unlock them all the way to their last books and so we'll go through that one we'll go through this guy here this is a good one I, I, I think this is a really good trade here six emeralds for unbreaking one so for 18 emeralds basically you could oh actually no it doesn't work that way uh, it's gonna be 24 emeralds to get to unbreaking three right because you'd have to buy a one and a one combine that to make a two. Oh, I'm way off <laughs> and then another one and a one combine that to make another two and then combine your two twos together no okay so that's it that's 24 wow um yeah math it's too early for that <laughs> anyway pretty good deal pretty good deal there so and i may pick on a few other librarians see this is what i mean though you saw me just slice that guy up and they don't have any problem still breeding so yep i don't mind killing these villagers in place we don't need to send them away from the village or anything crazy uh but yeah let's uh let's do this let's build a sugarcane farm that seems smart. All right, so I've selected where I'm going to put this thing. I've selected a design, and I've started to kind of mock it up to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. And so this is what I've decided to go with. We want to push this up against this wall. Yeah, it's going to block the view out to the ocean, which is kind of a bummer. But uh, we will still have windows here. I think I'll actually leave, definitely leave this window in the corner and build up something around that if we can. And uh, we still have this back wall we could do something with and this other one. Uh, in fact, actually, this other one I think I have plans for. So it's pretty much going to be this back wall. And I may actually do something kind of cool with it in the future. We'll see. I'll do my best to leave that back wall open to the ocean because I do like having that view. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, back to the sugarcane farm. Let me kind of go over the concept here just so you guys can see it. We have some hoppers. And in fact, I think... I have these faced in the wrong way. I don't want all the sugar cane going down to that end of the room. I, th I think what we want to do is actually have them going here. Oops, got to hold shift. <laughs> Makes it go a little bit slower, but at least it works. And there we go. So I got to get a whole bunch more because we need to go all the way down to that end. There's going to be about 40 of them here uh, because I counted as 40 wide in between these two pillars. And Pretty simple concept here. It's pretty cool with the observer blocks, how they work. So you can see here, we got the observer block and then we're gonna have a line of redstone going all the way down. And that line of redstone will activate as many pistons as it can. Uh, of course, 15 strength signal. So whatever observer gets set off, it'll be 15 blocks on either side of it, uh, or 14, I guess, <laughs> on either side of it, would go off, including itself. And then it's just gonna basically hit the sugar cane down into the hoppers. So as a single one go grows up all the way, the piston fires, and yeah, you can see right away, it's not exactly lossless, but it will definitely get us enough sugar cane uh, so that one I think actually did fall. Yeah, okay, so we are getting some and uh, <laughs> Yes, basically, it's the top one that usually ends up on the dirt that time I caught it uh, Since it's only gonna go only one of these is gonna be 
three high, you're only going to lose one sugar cane every time this goes off. The rest of them should go. So all these other ones that have grown to too high and haven't grown high enough to set off an observer should get knocked into the, the uh, hoppers pretty much all the time. Not 100% of the time, but uh, enough for me to be happy with this. So we are going to do all the way down, and then I think I want to stack it up. I want to go three of these, so three levels of these, but I don't know, it's tight squeeze. This is a four high design, and you can see we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I'm not sure it's gonna work. I'm not sure, I don't think we're gonna be able to get it in there. My other option is, I guess before we get started too much, maybe I'd be smart to drop the whole thing by one block. And that way we actually could fit in four because, or three, because yeah, now that I can see exactly what we're dealing with, one, two, three, four, uh, the next dirt would have to be here, right? And then you would have uh, your, what, your, your sea lantern, you'd have your piston, your observer, dirt, sea lantern, piston, and we can't put an observer up there because right above that is our villagers. So yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to drop this thing down. Oh, man. <laughs> I went all the way down with this. I put a whole bunch of stuff in, water and everything. Oh, I should have thought of that ahead of time. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to drop this down one more block, and I think it'll actually look kind of cool with this first layer of dirt being flush with the ground down there. So, yeah, let me um, let me move this whole thing down, and then I'm just going to get to business, guys. I'm going to build this thing up, and uh, this is probably going to be a pretty big jump cut because I also have a live stream that's going to happen between now and probably the next chance I get to record a clip. So, yep, big jump cut coming up right now. All right, got it built up, and check it out. It's looking good. It is working great. We already are getting some sugarcane in, and I've already used a lot of it. And so basically just have a, uh, well, first of all, I should say I decided to against the 40 hoppers. I uh, don't want to add that lag to the base. So instead we just have a hopper minecart pickup thing going on here on a clock. So every uh, time the items transfer back and forth, it will send this cart off and it will run along and collect all the sugarcane that has fallen onto the track for us. And then it will get to the end here and basically just use the item drop off station to put it in here. And I gotta, I gotta get something a little better than this, obviously just do this temporarily to start collecting some sugarcane, which we are doing. <laughs> and yeah, I've collected quite a bit already from AFK and getting some more villagers. So yeah, that is done, and I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. I like that it's got the greenness with the sugar cane and you know all the, the prismarine. It looks good together. I might want to do something else on that side that also is green. We'll see. We'll see maybe in a future episode. Uh, also done some work up top here. Uh, you see I got my little barricade here just to make sure no zombies can sneak in because I do every once in a while still get spawns. I gotta find, gotta find out where they're coming from. But uh, this way they can't get up. I got my jump boost on, only I can get over that on both sides there. And this floor is absolutely safe because we're in the monument, as I mentioned before. But you can see I'm starting to put in a lot more villagers and a lot more are librarians now. So we're starting to get some good stuff, except for that. That's Thorns one. Uh, but I've gone ahead and unlocked a lot of these already. Ooh, looting three for 23. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, so yeah, this is looking good. Looking good. You can see I've got a few villager heads too from going through the sorting process and slicing them up. I'm getting some heads out of the deal, which is awesome. But what I want to do now is actually start to label these guys. So for instance, I put this head here just to, just to remind myself that this guy right here, he's a good one. He's a good one. Let's take a look and see what he's got. He's got Fire Aspect 1 for 15, which is pretty cheap. Um, fire Aspect 1, meh, probably not the best of books, but if we go along here, look at this, Silk Touch 11. That is, that is a pretty good price for Silk Touch books. I will take that. And then the one after that, Oh yeah, <laughs> we got ourselves a mending villager for only 14. That's not bad. I know you can get lower, but uh, 14, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to I want to change it up. I was doing these half slabs, but you can see the mine carts, and I don't think I like that. So instead, I'm going to do stairs here. And then what I want to do is we'll have the signs on top for our patrons as we make our way over here. But on the bottom here, I think what I want to do is I want to actually put what they sell. So it was Fire Aspect 1 for, what was it, 15. All right, good, that fit. Uh, and we had Silk Touch after that. And I believe it was 10. No, it was 11. And then we have Mending. And that one was 14. Okay, so there they have a sign. So now I won't really need this anymore. I can just walk by, look for the one that says Mending or Silk Touch, and we'll do that for all of these guys that I've unlocked. I've also kept 
a few farmers in here that had pretty cheap potato and carrot trades. Not that I have a carrot and potato farm just yet, but uh, someday I will. And I have my string farm, my spider farm I showed a few episodes ago. So I could get some emeralds out of this guy too, which is kind of nice. And what is this one? Another fisherman. So there's two ways to get string. You can get it from Fletcher's or you can get it from fishermen, and that's not a bad deal. Oh, coal as well. Uh, I could trade, I could use the uh, coal from the Wither Skull farm and trade with these guys. So I have a few guys in here that's gonna help me get emeralds as well. Another Fletcher, uh, may not keep them all. What do you got, buddy? What do you got? I think I, I think I went through and unlocked just about every single one. Lure three, Sweeping Edge three. Not bad, not bad. Sweeping Edge three, I'll definitely take that. That's a useful book for sure. So I need to go through and label all these guys. I've unlocked quite a few of them. Um, and as well as getting the patron signs up. <laughs> these villager heads are great. Let's put that on. <laughs> That looks so silly. Oh, I love it. I love it. So yeah, I got some more work to do as far as labeling these guys and really seeing what we can unlock here. Um, but this is going great. And you can see I've done a lot of AFK to, to get these guys in. Not a single villager has gotten stuck up in here. So, you know, I didn't need any of those mechanisms like a, a zombie trapped in there that the babies can see to force them to run off the edge. As long as you're within 32 blocks of the farm itself, the villagers will wander and 100% of the time, at least so far in my experience, which has been at least 100 plus villagers being born, uh, they've, they've run off. So I've had no issues whatsoever with this. It's just all a matter of just staying close by when you AFK and having that on off switch. Um, so yeah, still got this still going up here. And you know, is, I'm away from this guy, so it lowers him. And every time I step in here, <laughs> and I've had to kind of just block myself in. I haven't had anything really come at me when I'm in here, so it's not really a problem. But uh, yeah, I actually kind of stole these from there, so let's put them back. <laughs> May want to come up with something better there. But anyway, this is working just great because I'm still within 32 blocks. And like I said, I haven't had a single one trapped. We've been able to pull them all out. And eventually, I'm going to replace all these guys with librarians as well. We'll see. I mean, that's a lot of villagers. So we may keep quite a few different ones as well. You know, maybe keep a couple weapon smiths around, uh, see what they can unlock. At least, you know, get some cheap uh, or get some, you know, diamond swords and whatnot and diamond pickaxes from, let's see, is this guy a blacksmith? Nope, armor. Yeah, we can get a chest plate from this guy probably. So a lot of good stuff. Uh, usually they're expensive, but you can see here I've started to do my patron signs. I'm going to go through those at the end of the video. Uh, but first I want to do a little bit of cleanup here and get some of these villagers marked so you guys can see exactly what we're dealing with. Just that little bit of time up there. <laughs> Got the villages acknowledged and you can see they're trying to breed, but that's going to go away and... Uh, and we'll be just fine. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to start labeling all these dudes. And <laughs> let's see what we got. All right, there we go. I've got all the signs in and these guys labeled. I stopped here because I got to get another guy in here first. Um, but let's take a look and see what he's got. I didn't even look. Projectile protection one. Eh, take a lot to get a four there. Curse of binding. Never going to use that. Aqua affinity. Could potentially use that. Let's see if we got any better deals here, though. Uh, you can see the projectile, projectile protection three, uh, which would be cheaper than that one we saw over there. So probably never use that. But power three is good. And again, curse of binding. I don't know why <laughs> we get a lot of these curses. Uh, but there you go. Look at that. Aqua affinity six. Good deal there. Another uh, projectile protection four. So in that case, that obviously would be better than that one. So that would never get used over there, uh, which pretty much makes this guy. Well, power three may come in handy. We'll see. Uh, but we got some flame over here some blast protection, some Bane of Arthropods. Look, we got another Mending here, but that one's 24, so probably not using that. Fortune 2, interesting, but I think we got a better one down the line. Infinity for 9, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. Uh, power 1, Punch 2. Look at this. Look at this one. Silk Touch for 5 emeralds. Wow, that is a good deal. And Depth Strider 2 is always good to have. Uh, let's keep going. We got our sweeping edge here, or sweeping ed, because that's all I could fit on the side. There we go. Looting 3, 23. Not bad, not bad. Uh, skip those guys because they're farmers and Fletchers and whatnot. Uh, there's our Fortune 3 for 44. Wait, is that our first Fortune 3? Yeah, I think that was our first Fortune 3. So I 
don't remember what the Fortune 2 was. We're going to run back and forth. Where was the Fortune 2? Uh, is it cheaper to get two Fortune 2s? No, it was 29 or 31. So, so it would be cheaper to get just the Fortune 3 straight away and put that on there. But it is 44 emeralds, so that's quite a lot. Aqua Affinity, some lure. Got another lure there. That one's cheaper. A um, lot more. We got another Projectile Protection 4. That one's pretty expensive, 57. Uh, there's another sweeping edge. That one's cheaper, I believe. I am real interested in this. Efficiency 5 for 35. That comes in handy when you're trying to keep your sword costs down. Or, or I'm sorry, your pickaxe costs down. Uh, you could you can put that on there uh, or whatever, uh, any of your tools. It's nice to have. So if you, uh, you're you going to be applying a lot of enchantments and you're afraid you're going to run out, you can put that one on there. Uh, here we go. Mending. The year. I showed you guys this earlier, the Silk Touch and the Mending guy. Actually, this Silk Touch now is more expensive than the other one we found on there for five. And this one here, this is another good one, Sharpness 5. Uh, so I ran into this problem a while ago where I was trying to make this perfect sword and I can't get another looting on there. You can see it's only looting two because I applied too many other things and I just ran out of cost. So it's too expensive to put anything else on here. So in this case, if I had made the sword with a sharpness five book right off the bat, I would have been able to get the rest of these things on here, no problem. And so that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably make a new sword and I'll grab all, a book of each of these things. Uh, let's see, yeah, we should have all of these already. I think I've seen them all, uh, but let's keep going down the line here. We got more Silk Touch Fortune. Uh, unbreaking one for six. So like I mentioned before, if you want to get to unbreaking three, you have to buy two. You have to buy four ones, basically. Uh, combine the, the four into two twos, and then the two twos into a three. So basically 24 emeralds for unbreaking three, which is not bad. Another mending. So got a lot of mendings, which is cool, but uh, that one's 24. So I'm not going to use that one. Infinity, fire protection. There's another silk touch. Infinity. And here we go, guys. This is the guy. This is the guy. Let's keep this guy alive. Mending for 10 emeralds. Are you kidding me? 10 emeralds. That is ridiculously cheap for mending. I will take it. I don't know if you can get any cheaper than that. Um, some of you can tell me in the comments. I believe that's the cheapest I've ever seen, though. So that is awesome. We have our mending villager. And we're going to be using him quite a lot. So I think I have pretty much every enchantment that I would possibly need. There's probably a few more that I haven't gotten quite yet. And we got all these cells to fill up. And I'll do that. We, we did get a couple more villagers uh, while I went and had lunch. I AFK'd. And I think there's, let's see, oh, there's a couple white coats in there. They're actually really close to the edge. Let's see if we pull one out right now. <laughs> nope. How about a villager head instead? No? <laughs> oh. This, this is always fun. This is always fun. Just kill these guys over and go. I'm surprised. Oh, wow. I had a lot more villagers in there than I expected. I didn't think I was AFK that long. This thing is cranky now. Villagers. All right. How about you? Cartographer. I always get excited about these white coat guys, and then they end up being cartographers, which do me absolutely no good. Come on. Let's at least get one librarian up in here. Oops, I do that so often too. I should put like a hopper there and just wrap it around and send it back in here so I can skip that part. Um, I could probably do a lot better of a job with the sorting system too. There we go, librarian this time. Uh, power one for 16. And we won't unlock the rest. Actually, yeah, let's do a little bit. Let's do a little bit unlock right now and then we'll send him on his way. I think I have paper somewhere here. Here's some paper. Um, why are these villager heads not stacking? There we go. Those ones did. Is it because I put this one on my head, or because I put it? I oh, I put it up and I broke it, and I think that changes how it works. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's let me show you real quick how I've been unlocking these guys. Because I've got so much paper, I've pretty much been relying on the paper. So I just kind of do the the paper trade over and over again. It's kind of good to get some emeralds anyway, and we do this until we unlock the guy all the way. And this has given us quite a few emeralds. Finally locked up there. And now, because it was the first time we did this trade, it's definitely 100% going to unlock on the first time you trade anything with these guys, which is good. Um, but now, I mean, I could go and do one of these other trades, but I don't really want to give them books. I want to keep my books. I don't really want to give them emeralds just yet unless I have to. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing the paper. And if we do as much paper as we can, there's a pretty good chance that they'll unlock again. So let's do that. Do go through a lot of paper, but in, the, in return, we're getting and some some good emeralds out of the deal and so you can see he did unlock again so we're not quite to the books just yet we have glass at the last thing and so we'll do the paper again and i'm just triple clicking in here which is which is a cool way to, to quickly pick up your your extra paper that you need to keep trading looks like we're gonna run out and i might have to go grab some more to uh 
continue this demonstration, but all right, we're gonna give it a we're gonna roll the dice here since I ran out of paper. We'll we'll go ahead and unlock him with some other trades, but he did it himself anyway without going all the way, which is good. So now we should have our first next book i should say it's our second book in the trade list and it's depth strider 2 for 16 which isn't a isn't a bad deal at all i think we had depth strider 3 though and i can't remember the price but uh anyway uh so that's there and if we want to unlock one more we could trade paper again and hope he unlocks um but because i will need books for all these all these uh you know enchanted books that i'm going to be buying from these guys. I'm going to go ahead and get a bookshelf and then we'll just break it down into books and that gives us three books and we'll be happy with that. So he should unlock because that's the first time I've ever done that trade. And we are all the way through him now. Last book is for 16 emeralds. Blast Protection 3. Eh. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Probably won't use that one. Anyway, uh, we'll send him on his way anyway just to get him in the cell and good to go. Hey, look at you. Some XP from trading. Yay. <laughs> Alright, he should end up down here safe and sound. Do I have any more stairs? I do. I will add his, his, oh, this is going to be a problem. I just noticed uh, because I've got these guys kind of back to back in here with no space in between. We're not going to be able to put signs up for either one of them because they're in the corner. Hmm. Uh, I'll have to figure out what to do with that. Oh, I didn't think about that. I just kind of just kind of went one after the other. Maybe I need to actually make this like a three wide corner and then skip that way. Uh, really couldn't make it symmetrical in here because the monument is built with even number of blocks. And because of the way we're skipping and then turning, it was kind of kind of difficult to make it symmetrical uh, when you're doing this kind of odd number stuff. But anyway, he's in there and I'll fix the track to get the next guy in later. I want to go over here and to finish things off, I put up those patron signs and I want to go ahead and acknowledge my patrons now. And we got some signs up. So I think I did what I do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight today. So we'll do eight today, maybe do this wall next time, and then we'll start carrying it on until we get caught up. But today we have the Dubtastic, and he's got a, a message on here. So all the signs are going to start off at the top with their name. I am going to come back and name tag these guys. So this is the Dubtastic right here. He is a toolsmith, and it says sub on my YouTube channel. Uh, so, yeah, it's Dubtastic. So search YouTube for Dubtastic. You'll find his channel. Uh, we got Got Nate over here. <laughs> He's got the joke. Got the joke. The mandatory donations are graciously accepted. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a joke from our streams, kind of playing off the little derp thing last season and yeah <laughs> oh so he's got a toolsmith thanks scott nate for that <laughs> and mooney McCuty, the villager crusher is a librarian Ooh, i didn't mark down what you got here power two what else we got sweeping edge three. Ooh, that's a good one that's a good one. 21. And Smite 5. Yeah. <laughs> and we got Guacamole, the sombrero guy. So uh, that's another thing from stream. Tango and I, we wore these huge sombreros that Guacamole had sent us all the way authentic from Mexico. And he is a leather worker. So thank you there, Guacamole. And Stark666 is giving out free hugs as a leather worker. So <laughs> awesome. Appreciate that, Stark. Ryder says, let's ride. Of course, he's a cleric. I haven't unlocked, I haven't really unlocked unlocked any of these other guys uh, so other than the librarians so obni says cats are evil you want to know why you got to go check out youtube search for obni and you will find out the answer to that question why are cats evil <laughs> deb deb says impy dimpy is the best impy dimpy little little yeah little term people use <laughs> a little nickname i've been given i guess and you are, are an armor so i'll definitely be unlocking deb deb here to uh get some chest plates We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Chest plates are good for trading because it's like what eight diamonds, eight diamonds to make a chest plate, or you could just trade. I don't know. It's probably like sixteen emeralds or so. We'll see what he gets. But yeah, we'll do the next uh, eight or how many I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll do nine next time. Uh, so thank you to my patrons. You guys are the best. And uh, I'll be touring their server on stream actually today, the day this video goes out. So if you guys want to check that out, three p.m. PDT will be checking out some of their builds as well. So tune into that on mixer.com slash impulse SV. And that's gonna do it for me today, guys. We got we got a lot done. Even though I said I wasn't gonna get into villager trading this season, I am kind of happy we did, mainly because as I run backwards, I'll stand next to this guy, my new favorite best friend here. <laughs> Mending 10. Love it. Love it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe before you go. With that said, see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.